Hi right, guys, Buildzoid here. So today we're I'm going to be complaining about a motherboard. So if you don't want to listen to that, you should you should go watch something else cuz I am I am not in a good mood because, you know, I I've just like I had a plan for like things that I wanted to do and then I realized, wait a minute, this motherboard that I bought and paid money for doesn't do any of that. So I can't do those things because the bloody motherboard sucks. So Anyway, what motherboard are we taking a look at here today? Um, we're taking a look at the X570i Strix, um, which I bought because here's the thing, right? So for every platform, I would like to test at least like one motherboard from each vendor. Um, ideally, you'd want to test like two or three, but you know, Gigabyte sends me samples, MSI sends me samples, EVGA sends me samples, Asus and ASRock don't, and that's fine. I can just buy the boards, that's why, you know, AHOC has a Patreon, but, like, I can't buy three, <laughs> okay, like, they, they cost too much. So, anyway, I was making purchasing decisions for X570 testing for, like, an, you know, Asus motherboard, and basically my choices were the Impact for 343 quid. Um, then I was also considering maybe a Tough, which, uh, you know, well, okay, 199 is not the cheapest I've seen it for, sometimes it goes for around 180. Um, and then there was the X570i Strix. Now, the impact is, like, actually meant for extreme overclockers, and uh, I really wish that I had it instead gone for that. Um, the Strix is technically branded ROG, but, you know, the Strix brand is, is like, y you take the ROG feature set, and then you dilute it, like, a million to one, um, and then you brand it Strix. And basically homeopathic ROG. So, you know, that's that's what the Strix brand is for. And so I can't really be that surprised that I my disappointment is as like my disappointment is immeasurable. And arguably like my, my week has been ruined. Um because it's just like the board just like why doesn't it do this? It costs 250 quid. I can get 200 pound ITX boards that do things that this doesn't. And it's just stupid. Um, anyway, so yeah, the, the options were Strix, uh, X570i Gaming, um, the Tough Board, or the, or the Impact, right? Um, and the thing is, is I ultimately decided not to get the, the Impact, because the Impact is very, like, it's 343 quid, and I figured, hey, the, the, I, you know, the ITX Strix, um, in terms of VRM is basically the same thing. In terms of, like, overall, the feature, like, the main thing on, on paper, the main losses going from the impacts of the Strix is, like, okay, you lose a postcode, you lose the buttons, you lose a bunch of the LN2 features. But the thing is, it's, like, I don't really need a lot of the LN2 stuff that the impact offers because I already have an MSI X570 godlike. I have an X570 Extreme from Gigabyte as well. And so, you know, in terms of if I wanted to take Ryzen on LN2, I already have two very strong options in terms of motherboards. Um, and so I didn't really see a good reason to go and get a, you know, X570, like an impact, because it's just like it's a hundred quid more than the ITX Strix. And, you know, if there's not going to, and if the only things I lose are LN2 features that I'm probably not even going to use, then, because, uh, you know, just look at my recent history of actually running anything sub-zero, and it's kind of, it's pretty bleak, because I don't think I've run anything sub-zero for like six months now, or longer. Um, and the thing is, is so, you know, it's just like, okay, I'll just not get the impact, because, you know, I, there's no real benefit to me. Um you know, since I don't really care about having the LN2 features. What I didn't realize is that the impact, the, like, the, the ITX Strix takes away some rather, you know, useful features, even if you're just going to be doing, uh, you know, casual ambient overclocking, like having a useful voltage range. Like, the hell is that? I complained about this on the X570 Tai Chi, and I, like, the hell is that? <laughs> and, and on the Tai Chi, it turns out that was just me not, not realizing how, how the settings are laid out, and, you know, that board has a, has a, like, you need to change something in the BIOS, and then you get more voltage range. Um, but this right here, the, the, this right here, like, the, the, as far as I can tell, there's nothing that I'm missing. Like, I can go, you know, DOCP, 
and I'm currently on a kit of RAM that the board doesn't particular like that that isn't yeah anyway still 1.8 volts right um and there there's no like extreme mode anywhere right because this isn't uh this isn't a proper ROG motherboard this is a Strix board so you don't get all of the extreme overclocking features um and it's just like and the thing is, this 1.8 volts voltage restriction, like, why why is it so freaking pointless? Well, it's way too high for daily usage. There's uh, quite a few memory ICs that if you ram 1.8 volts into them, they'll just up and die. Um, it's also way too high for BDI because BDI above around 1.65 volts, like, the, the thing is, I wouldn't daily 1.65 volts on BDI myself anyway, but if you're one of, the, like, I've seen a few people who are like, oh, I just, I just don't really care that much, I'll daily 1.65 volts anyway, um, but even if you're one of those people who's going to daily like a, a relatively high daily, like relatively high voltage, like 1.65 volts, the thing is, uh, 1.8 volts is so high that you need to enable max mem, as in you can't actually use all of the memory you have installed because it's too unstable if you have, uh, don't have max mem turned on. So 1.8 volts is just like this, like you can't actually competitively bench on this. Because a lot of BDI, if you're going for, you know, competitive benching, you're, it scales up to 2 volts, or even 2.1, or actually, I've, I've seen some people, like, some screenshots of kits running, like, 2.15 volts, where it's just like, okay, those are, those are ridiculous. Um, but in my personal collection, I regularly run up to, like, 2, 2.1, okay, on, on my memory stick. So for me, this is 200, 300 millivolts too little in terms of voltage range, and then it gets better. So not only do you have this stupid VDIM limitation, you also have a VTT DDR control that's implemented like not like not implemented fully, um, which is still better than some other motherboards out there which just don't have VTT DDR control. Um, but the thing is, like the part of VTT DDR control that Asus actually decided to implement is the useless part. So if you punch in 0 0.1 or, you know, well, yeah, like 0 0.6, it goes up to 0 0.9. Why? Because Asus decided that, so, the well, for people who don't know how VTT DDR works, so VTT DDR is the termination voltage for your memory sticks. It's supposed to be half your VDIM, okay? By spec, it's supposed to be half your VDIM. So if you have 1.5 volts VDIM, it's supposed to be 0 0.75. If it's, uh, you know, if you have 1.2, um, it's supposed to be 0 0.6. You, you can see that the board automatically sets it correctly for you. Um, so that's that's just fine. But in a lot of cases, with a lot of memory kits, you'll find that you actually need to lower it bef below that specification to maintain stability. This is especially true if you're going into high voltages, like 2 volts on the VDIM um, with certain VDI kits. Now, the thing is, Asus um, implemented the VTT DDR control where you can't lower it. Y you can raise it, which, in my experience, has never done anything for stability ever. Um, and you can set it to half VDIM, but you can't lower it below half VDIM. And it's just like, are you kidding me? Like, this is a 250 pound ITX motherboard. It has ROG branding on it. I thought ROG was like the overclocking division of Asus. What the hell is this? Like, I can get a 200 pound ITX board from Gigabyte that has both, of, like, has more VDIM range and has a proper VTT DDR control, I think. I'm not, I have not messed with that board in a while, but I don't remember having, like, a VTT DDR voltage range issue with that motherboard. Um, so, why is it that I can spend 50 quid more and get voltage control that, you know, I would expect from sub $200 IT, like, yeah, sub $200 motherboards. Like, I should have just gone and bought the bloody tough, right? Because, uh, you know, my logic behind buying the Strix was like, oh, I'm not going to do any extreme overclocking, but I did want to do some, you know, I, I wanted to see, like, if, if this thing would be uh, good for, like, you know, testing out high speed, high memory clock speeds, that kind of thing, just doing silly things with RAM. And it's just like, no, you can't do silly things with RAM on this because uh, it doesn't have the full voltage controls, right? Like, the come on so i should have just bought the bloody tough and saved myself the trouble like another you know i i could have saved even more money i, I could have because you know it's like oh if you're not buying the impact you're not gonna get the full feature set i could have just bought the tough then 
Right? If I wanted to show off daily settings, I should have just bought the bloody tough. So, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really, really disappointed with this. Um... Because I was hoping this would just be like a cheaper alternative to the impact, right? But it's not. It's not an alternative to the impact at all because you don't have the voltages. <laughs> and it's just... And, and to be fair, this is a really, really niche complaint. But... Like... It's still really disappointing. Right? Like... I guess my expectations were too high when I was like, oh yeah, I'll just get this and I'll, I'll lose the LN2 features and it'll it'll be fine. It'll it'll be a great little motherboard for memory overclocking. And then you go into the BIOS and you go like, oh, I guess it won't be a great little motherboard for memory overclocking. Um, so, yeah. Now, the thing is, I do plan to do, like, I still want to do, like, oscilloscope measurements of, very like, X570 motherboards, and for that, I will be soldering, um, you know, like, hookup, like, connection points to the motherboards. So, since I'm already going to be, like, completely destroying the warranty anyway, I'm just like, well, I could fix this. <laughs> You know, I mean, I have an X299 Micro 2 from EVGA where I ran into exactly this, where it's just like, oh, you can't set more than 1.8 volts and you can't set more than... And actually, that board doesn't have VTT DDR control at all. So I was just like, oh, screw it. I'll just I'll just add those function, add that functionality myself. Um, so I guess I can do this for this board as well. And it's not really that like it's not stopping me, but like... I'm I'm still really disappointed, right? Like, I I really wasn't expecting that I'd have to fix the freaking voltage range on a 250 pound um, ROG branded motherboard. Like, again, then it's a Strix board, so you know what what can I expect? Homeopathic ROG boards, where it's just like they have the name, and that's about it. <laughs> But they might have they might have been developed in the same room as the actual ROG motherboards. <laughs> Actually, that's probably exactly the case. But like, why 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 isn't there more voltage range? And then the VTT DDR, I would not be surprised if this was actually like a physical restriction. Like the the VDIM, I wouldn't be surprised if that's just like a software limit where they that's just locked down from the BIOS side. But the VTT DDR, like. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the regulator they're using for the VTT DDR is literally not like there's no way to get it to go negative, like to, to go below half, um, which is just stupid. Uh, again, you know, there's a there, there's definitely like it shouldn't be that hard to modify the motherboard to take care of that. But it's annoying. It's really, really annoying. So. Yeah, Um Anyway, that's that's it for this video. This this was a useless waste of time, wasn't it? Anyway, thanks to, you know, the patrons for for funding the purchase of the board. Even though uh honestly <laughs> I'm so see, this is actually like this right here is why I started AHOC is just like because try to get information like this out of out of most reviews, right? Is like where where do the voltage limits end? What do you actually have working VTT DDR control on all motherboards? And it's just like, well, in this case, no, no, you don't. <laughs> this, this doesn't count as working. Like if the fact that you can raise it is just like, I've not ha yet had a memory kit where that would actually help. So, you know, it may as well not be implemented at all. Um, anyway, so yeah. On the other hand, they, they did, you know, what, what I do love is like, this is an ROG motherboard, so it has this silly socket sense, die sense switch where it's just like, that's an actual physical extra component that like cost money that they added onto the board. And it's completely redundant on the X570 platform. And actually, it would also be completely redundant even on Z390 if it weren't for the fact that Asus uses dirt cheap voltage controllers that don't support, like, you can't access them over the software properly. And, and that causes a whole bunch of issues anyway. But the, the, the funny thing is, is just like, um, 
yeah, they have this like, like it's an, it's kind of a neat feature sometimes, but on X570 it's redundant because you have the SVI2 TFN sensor, which is built directly into the CPU, so that has the die sense voltage reading just, just fine. And, you know, is actually, it has actually higher resolution than the implementation that Asus has here because this just goes to the Super I.O. and the Super I.O. is terrible, so... Um, and, and that's just like super IO chips aren't really meant to be super accurate for voltage measurement. But anyway, point stands like, you know, like I would, I would happily give up this extra, you know, chip on the board for, you know, an actually useful VDIM voltage range and maybe a VTT DDR control that isn't like not finished. Um, so yeah. Anyway, that's that's it for this video. Like, that's all I wanted to say. Because at this point, all I'm really going to do with this motherboard is I'm probably going to do, like, a, 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 a BIOS walkthrough for it. Then, of course, I'm going to do, like, the oscilloscope measurements for this board as well. But And, well, if I modify it, it might actually be good. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how this goes. Like, we'll see what I end up deciding to do with it. But because the thing is, is like I'm th like I was planning to do some memory overclocking with this board, and now it's just like you know what? I would much rather do a video showing off memory overclocking on a motherboard that actually has proper voltage controls, like that's ITX. So I would just do it with like the X570 ITX boards I have from Gigabyte, or maybe you know the MSI X570 Unify, which it's not ITX, but at least it doesn't have like silly like that's still a really cool board, and I I don't think I've really covered like done anything with mine yet, so. Yeah, um, anyway, that, that's sort of it, you know. Yeah, my, my, my disappoint, my expectations were far too high. My disappointment now is immeasurable, and, well, I, I get, like, I, I guess I'll just phys modify the board for useful voltage ranges. Oh, well, anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thank you, patrons, for funding the board. Um, if you'd like to, uh, like, share, subscribe. Um, oh yeah, there's also like join the notification squad um, if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking. I have a Patreon, um, you know, as I've mentioned several times. There's a link to that down in the description below. Uh, there's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, there's a link to that down in the description below as well. Both of those, you know, make it possible for me to just buy motherboards instead of having to hope that I can get samples for for some vendors. So. Yeah, um, I should have bought the bloody Impact. Oh, well, or the Tough. You know, with the Tough, I wouldn't be so disappointed because at least it's not like an ROG branded motherboard and it's it's cheaper, like it's sub 200 quid. So at that point, I'm willing to tolerate things like not having full voltage range. It's like nobody's actually going to use a Tough for competitive overclocking, right? Like, or or if they are, then they're just kind of setting themselves up to fail. But yeah. This, this 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 is not okay like at all anyway that's it thanks for watching goodbye